How are you, Bunny? came a female voice that he recognised instantly. Margaret Byrne, his neighbour on the left, was leaning over the fence, a cigarette dangling from her lips. You need to get yourself a dressing gown. You'll catch your death. Another head popped over the right-hand fence. It belonged to Mrs. Cynthia Doyle, his other neighbour, wearing her hair in curlers under a pink headscarf. Good afternoon, Bunny. The warm smile dropped from her face. Margaret. The air around Bunny grew colder still. The two women had a long-running feud. So long-running, in fact, that Bunny doubted anybody could remember how it started. It was ever-present, a constant level of passive aggressiveness, interspersed with occasional peaks of actual aggressiveness for a bit of variety. He tried to give each woman a winning smile, but his face wasn't up for it. Apologies for my state of undress, ladies. I was just nipping out to bring in the washing. You'll catch your death, said Cynthia. That's what I said, Margaret chipped in. He needs to get himself a good dressing gown. Cynthia nodded her head reluctantly. Conceding the point. Actually, I have a lovely one that belonged to my Albert. He's not using it any more, God rest his soul. So you're welcome to it. He was a smaller man than yourself, but it was always very big on him. Thank you very much for the kind offer, but I have one already. It's just in the wash. Bunny was fairly sure he did indeed have a dressing gown, although the chances of it being in the wash were remote. Odds on it could do with it, though. Still, wherever it was, it seemed a better option than a dead man's hand-me-downs. You would want to be taking better care of yourself, though, Bunny, advised Margaret. I'm going to drop round a casserole. I'll do you another one of those lasagnas you like, offered Cynthia. Lasagna, said Margaret, derision dripping from her voice. Would you hack at her ladyship and her fancy farden food? Oh, here we go. Don't go getting all offended just because Bunny has a more sophisticated palate on him than you do. Sophisticated palace, my arse. You're only getting pretentious, cause you can't do a basic decent coddle. Coddle was what Dubliners, proper Dubliners, called stew. It was like a shibboleth for those whose blood ran truly navy blue. Back in his early days in the capital, Bunny had made the mistake of saying it was just stew. For his trouble, he had got a clip round the ear from an eighty-year-old. It was different to Stew, although nobody could explain how. Shoes what you know, Margaret Byrne. My coddle is the talk of the town. The parish priest loves it. Yes, said Margaret. Did you hear he was in hospital again? You don't know what it is yet. It has nothing to do with my coddle. I'll tell you that for nothing. Bunny held up a hand. Sorry to interrupt, ladies. I just need a moment to... He turned around and did what he had come out to do, because he simply couldn't hold it in any longer. That's to say, he threw up down the drain. Jesus! exclaimed the ladies in unison. Are you okay? asked Margaret. You've not been eating badly prepared Italian food, have you? You keep talking, Margaret Byrne, and I'll come over there and give you something to be sick about. You're all mouth. By the time you get halfway here, you'll be retreating, just like the Italian army. <laughs> 